Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for a G.I. Joe comic book review. We are picking up where we left off, so we are on issue number 28. In the previous issue, we wrapped up the two-part Snake Eyes origin story. We also had a B-plot in which a squad of Joes infiltrated a Florida swamp to investigate Zartan's cabin. On the cover, we have an unidentified Cobra vehicle. We later learned that it's a Rattler, although the vehicle on the cover doesn't exactly follow the Rattler design. It is attacking the G.I. G.I. Joe Mobat Tank. Issue 28 is titled Swamp Fire, not to be confused with the Dreadnought Vehicle Swamp Fire. Gripwire, Torpedo, and Mutt are returning from their mission to the freighter that operated as G.I. Joe's main sea base until they got the USS flag. This issue was written by Larry Hama with pencils by Marie Severin. Marie Severin? Marie Severin was a legend! No wonder this issue looks so good. I did not recall that Marie Severin was involved with G.I. Joe, and that is super awesome. Mutt and Torpedo catch us up on the events of previous issues. This was common in these comic books of this era. Any issue could be someone's first issue, so you kind of had to get people caught up on the story. Duke, Wild Bill, and Roadblock arrive on the Dragonfly helicopter, and wow, Duke gets to ride inside, and Roadblock has to ride outside on the skid. Rank has its privileges. Torpedo points out where the cabin is on a map, we are definitely going to get a battle. Cobra Commander and Firefly are at Zartan's cabin, but Zartan believes the Joes are going to mount a full assault on that location, so Zartan and the Dreadnoughts say, to hell with this, we're out of here. We get a brief interlude where a couple of local police officers are waiting on a freight train. Breaker asks for directions, and then the G.I. Joe Mobat tank bursts out of the train and accidentally sideswipes the police cruiser. These two characters, Chief and R.L., are drawn to look a bit like Laurel and Hardy, and I think that's one of the references. Chief also has some similarity to Jackie Gleason's character Buford T. Justice in Smokey and the Bandit. And these two characters are similar to the Sheriff and Deputy Duane from Superman 2. The Sheriff was played by Clifton James. And Clifton James played Sheriff Pepper in the James Bond movie Live and Let Die in 1973. What we have here is a trope that would have been very familiar to readers in 1984 when this comic book was published. Back Back at the freighter, we get a new vehicle. It's the Killer Whale, my favorite vehicle. While Bill and Doc occupy the Dragonfly helicopter, Duke, Cutter, Roadblock, and Deep Six occupy the Killer Whale, and we are off to fight Cobra. Destro has some Cobra Rattlers stashed away in empty oil tankers, and it is a toy-accurate Cobra Rattler this time. This is great. The Baroness flies back to the Cobra base in Springfield, while Destro and Wild Weasel fly back to the swamp to attack the Joes and rescue Cobra Commander from the cabin. Back at the cabin, Firefly discovers one of the computer panels is fake, and behind it is a video game style control panel. Somewhere on Route 56, the Chief and RL are trying to pull over the Mobat tank, but Steeler, driving the tank, just ignores them. The local police are totally in the right here. They have jurisdiction. The Joe team must have been given some special police powers by Congress because they often operate inside the United States, and that would normally be illegal. Before we move on with the story, I want to pause and mention what a great job Marie Severin has done with these vehicles. These are mostly toy accurate vehicles, certainly more toy accurate than many issues we've gotten in this series. Firefly discovers the hidden computer panel controls a robot army of robot soldiers and his tanks. In universe, you could consider these robot soldiers to be precursors to the Cobra Bats, invented by Dr. Mindbender. They are like an earlier version of the Bats, they are not quite as advanced, they are totally remote controlled and not autonomous. In reality, the Cobra Bats would not have even entered the early design phase by 1984, so any similarity is totally coincidental. The Chief decides he's going to threaten the Joes with a shotgun if they don't pull that tank over, but he finds himself face to face with a robot army. A battle ensues. Chief joins in and blasts the robots with his shotgun. There are too many robots and his tanks, so Breaker calls for backup. The killer whale diverts through the swamp to assist. There's another little cutaway with an older couple watching TV as the killer whale whizzes by. This is a reference to the painting American Gothic. Back at the battle, the Mobat tank and the police car are attacked by Cobra Rattlers. In a brief one-page break from the action, the Baroness has returned to the Cobra base in Springfield and goes to the detention section, where Major Blood is imprisoned. The Baroness seems to be offering him a deal for his freedom. No doubt we will find out more about that in future issues. Destro and Wild Weasel are using thermal imaging to target the Mobat tank and the police car. The Joes are desperately 
throwing buckets of water on the Mobat's engine to cool it down so it will not show up on the heat detectors. It's too late for the police car. It gets blown up. Fortunately, the chief and RL manage to escape. The Joes successfully cool down the Mobat's engine so it no longer shows up on the thermal targeting system in Destro's Rattler. Just then, the killer whale shows up and they open fire on the Rattler. Destro's plane takes some damage, but he manages to turn around and spray the Joes with bullets. Roadblock's gun was destroyed. Deep Six was hit, but his gun still works. They still have one more chance to kill Destro. Destro is bearing down on them. Deep Six discovers his turret will not elevate. He cannot aim his gun at the attacking plane. Roadblock says, no, nah, we don't give up like that. He takes the gun off the turret and puts it on his own back. So Deep Six can fire back at the Rattler. Destro bails out just before the Rattler is destroyed. Back at the cabin, Wild Weasel has arrived to rescue Cobra Commander, but since the Rattler only has one extra seat, he can only rescue Cobra Commander. Firefly will have to find his own way out of the swamp. He is not happy about it. In the aftermath of the battle, we see the Joes wounded. This is something Larry Hama often included. These were not battles in which nobody got hurt. This was not the animated series. These battles had real consequences. As Firefly trudges through the swamp planning his revenge against Cobra Commander, he meets up with Destro, who also seems he would be happy with revenge against Cobra Commander. The issue ends with Zartan and the Dreadnoughts on their motorcycles heading north. North, Miss Tessmacher. They know the Joes came from the north and they want to find the Joes' hidden base. Next issue, Beach Whale, the deadliest fish not in the sea. I liked this issue very much. It's not easy to follow the legendary two-issue Origin of Snake Eyes story. This issue returns to staples of G.I. Joe. They introduced new vehicles because, of course, they have toys to sell. It's done in a very fun way, though. This story didn't move the plot forward very much, but we got a lot of excitement and action. I love Marie Severin's artwork here. It's very solid. The faces are all distinct, the uniforms are mostly correct, and she makes an effort to draw the vehicles mostly toy accurate. How did a legend like Marie Severin get involved with G.I. Joe? It's probably due to Larry Hama. Larry was an industry insider. He knew everyone, and that was a benefit to the G.I. Joe series on more than one occasion. That was my review of G.I. Joe number 28. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share this video. I have a lot of vintage G.I. Joe toy and comic book reviews in my back catalog. Please check them out and stay tuned for more. Support the channel on Patreon. It helps me continue doing these videos. I will see you next time, and until then, remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.